everybody, it's Maggie here, and I am going to teach you guys today how to make renders using the crappiest things ever. I have Blender. Okay, I don't I don't have the time or the software to get Cinema 4D, so I have Blender. And I have a Mac too, so that's also a factor. And then I have GIMP. And as you can see, using these very programs, I've made pretty decent things. And these programs are both free and easy to get, and they make hot things if you use them correctly. Um, so I'm gonna go on my Roblox Quick Asset Downloader and click that. And then it opens a file. So as you can see, her head is super far away. So I'm just going to select everything. A good way to do this is just to, okay. So I'm going to remove this from the group. So I'm going to cut it and then select workspace and paste it into, because I want to still have it. I just can't have it with the character right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this head and everything back over here. This is Blender. It's a free program, really easy to get. So when you open, you start with the blocks. So you're going to press Shift X and then just delete it. And then you are going to do File, Import, and the Wavefront.obj. Then click your item wherever it is. And then there you have it. So first thing you're going to do you are going to add material and then everything has texture and then the next thing I like to do is the camera so the pose I want I want it to be straightforward but her head is like moved to the side of it so then we're going to press cameras and then active camera then you're going to hold shift F and then you can move with WASD so then once you have the position you like for the camera then you're done just press view cameras active camera okay now for the lighting so we're going to get this light and then we're going to move it down to a specific position the thing with blender is that the lights first of all they don't reach everywhere and second they have that shine that is really disgusting and I hate it so here's what we're going to do okay so you're going to go to this little circle thingy over here and then it shows you this whole entire crazy thing so make sure you're selecting part of the body because it took me 10 minutes just to find this again because this is only my second time doing this. So I'm just going to close all things out to make them easier. And basically you go under diffuse and then you are going to select two. Then you're going to make the size 2.5 and you are going to make the intensity 0.5 or whatever you prefer. I'm going to make mine 0.5 and maybe 0.8. You can make it whatever you'd like. So you're going to make the smooth into 0.2. And then you're going to go to the specular and then you're going to make it zero. So you're going to turn off the specular completely. You want zero from that. And then that takes away all of the shine and it's matte. So now you're going to just play around the, with the lighting. You want to move it away kind of, give it like some perspective. So then it's, cause it doesn't, reach all of the places but you want it to still have shadows so now you get to position the body so you can right click to select a part I'm just going to move it and make it really basic I don't really like bending arms on blender um, it's just it still looks bad no matter what kind of shading you do so I'm just going to play around with this and I'm also going to be moving the head so what you do you click the little triangle to her head and then you're going to select all the other parts that are her head while holding shift. So I'm just going to do that right now. You want to select the head, hair, everything. Okay, so once you do, you can also rotate that, give it some perspective. And I think it looks really nice now, and it's not going to show her feet. I don't really like showing the feet personally. And now we're just going to select this, and you can move it wherever you'd like. Just know the rotation is still going to be on the inside there. So, on second thought, I actually don't have any good plans for this, so I'm just going to delete it. So, now we have this really cute thing. So, we are going to go back over here and select the first part. 
So now you get to press render, but before you do that, you want the background to be transparent. So on scene, you're going to go to shading and then change it from sky to transparent. So now you can go render and render it out. And it does look nice, but you still want to change the lighting if it gets like this blackness like that. So I'm going to do just that. And to remove the, the render, just go over here and press 3D view. So now I'm just going to mess around with the lighting a bit and make it pop more. This is all trial and error and now I have something I'm really happy with. And I really like how that looks, oh my god. Okay, now to save this, you don't want to screenshot it or anything because then it's going to end up being transparent. I made that mistake before. So you're going to go on image and then save as image and then just save it to wherever you'd like. So I'm going to go on desktop. I have folders for absolutely everything, so I'm going to just put it on editing parts and save. So now you have this super nice render. Okay, so while I'm getting a background set up, I'm going to show you guys how to get really nice fonts because GIMP comes with really crappy fonts. So the way I get really nice fonts, I go on dafont.com. So you guys can see that right there. And then there's all these really nice fonts. So I found a, I found a really nice font that I really like. So I'm going to press download. And basically, you just click the file. You can even search it up and find it. And then you're going to get this thingy. And there's like a folder. So there's the license, the flag, or it, some some of them don't come with these. Then there's a personal use thing and a poster. So basically, the pers the t dot ttf file is what you want. Um, some come with completely different things, um, but you want to find the TTF file and then double click that. And then you're going to get this little screen that shows up and you're going to press install font. And then you should have it. Okay, so we are going to make a new file and then make it a certain size. I'm going to make mine 1000 by 1000 because that's a really good quality and it's large. So when you upload it to anything, it'll look nice. So first we have to, you want to add an alpha channel and then you're going to make your brush really big. I'm using the eraser tool here and you are going to erase everything. Now I'm going to make another new file and this is going to be for my fonts. So I'm going to do the same exact thing, I'm going to add an alpha channel and erase everything. So now, um, Erica gave me a font that she wants me to use, so I'm going to open and then just select whatever it is, and then I have it here, so I'm going to just press Command X and then paste it here. And then I'm going to scroll out just a bit so I have space. Then you're going to press the scale tool. You want to make sure that this is linked together so that when you scale it, it doesn't get distorted at all. scale and then there you go so you can, now that's part of the background and I think it looks really nice person okay so the next thing we're going to be doing is adding the render so I'm going to just delete that file over here and then I'm going to do the same exact thing I'm going to open this and go on my desktop where I saved it and look for the picture that I made of Erica So I have my render right here, and then I'm going to make a new layer here just for that render. And then I'm going to press Command X and paste it on this new layer over here. So I want to have her over here. You can position it however you'd like, scale it, do whatever. And it's also really good quality, which I really like. So then there you go. Now we're going to be working on the font. So don't have to save that. So now you are going to, you want to make a new layer right now, like that. So now we are going to have our font. So just take out the text tool and resize it. The first thing you want to do is change the size of this to around 100 to 200, maybe 300, depending on how, how large the file is. But since it's by 1000, I'm just going to make it 100. 
and then I am going to find the font that I just downloaded. So I downloaded Raccoon. See, so it's right here. I'm just going to click that, and now that's the font I have. So I'm going to type Erica. And see, it's still pretty small, so I'm just going to resize it as big as I'd like. Just change the size over here while selecting everything. You want to make it bigger than it's actually going to be, just for reference. Um, now something I like to do, I'm going to change this later and make it colorful and pop a bit. But for now, it's going to be black. So now that you have your little Erica thing set up, you are going to right click it while the text tool is still out. That's very important. And then select the path from text option. And then it doesn't show anything, but then you have to press select and then front path. And then you have this little selection thing. Now is when you go to your other layer and then you go and select grow and then grow by however many pixels you want. I'm going to do three and eh, maybe a bit more. And then I'm going to make it whatever color I want. And then that's simply how you make an outline on GIMP, really easy. And then I'm going to get this, select the whole thing, um, Command X, and then Command V. And then you can make it whatever color you like. I'm going to make it shades of pink and purple, and just a bunch of fun things. So I'm going to go on the airbrush tool, and then make the brush hardness really soft, and then just paint around. So then once I'm happy with this, I'm going to get this layer and then merge it down so that it's all one layer, super easy, and then you are going to press Command X or Command C, whatever you prefer, and then make a new layer here, back on our other file, and then press Command V. And then there you have it, your little Erica thing. So I'm just going to place it right here, I can also resize it. Just gonna place that right there um I'm also probably going to change the color a bit so I'm just going to go on colors and then hue saturation and then you can change the colors around so I'm going to you can just play around with it really like how that looks so then there you have it you have your little thingy and now I'm going to teach you guys how to make an outline so we're going to have a new layer and then you are going to select the whole thing basically make sure down here it's a thousand by a thousand I'm just going to make sure every single border is even so now you have an a thousand by a thousand selection so I'm going to go on 25 and then we are going to select and then shrink and then shrink it by however many I'm going to do 10 eh, maybe more and then you have this situation then you're going to go back on select and then make a border and then however thick you want the border to be, I'm going to make it 5, and then it makes a cute little border thing. You can obviously play with these things. I'm probably going to make it go a little bit more in. You can completely adjust the settings however much you'd like. So now I have this border, and I'm just going to get the fill bucket and fill it in. And now for some texture, I'm just going to go on mode right here and then press overlay and then you can change the opacity make it your own I might change the color of this to like white or black just for a bit more contrast okay so now that I like how this looks I am just going to move the border to where I want it to be I like it how it's over the character but under the text and now you have this setup. So other things you could do are add a bunch of different kinds of effects. So I'm just going to close this out and then you're going to open whatever effects you'd like. So this is completely optional. I'm more of a fan of cleaner renders but you can do whatever you'd like. So I have a folder for this. I have flares 
and a bunch of different lenses and everything. So I'm just going to go get a flare. And then go in colors. And then hue saturation. And then just play around with it. I'm probably going to make it magenta. So now I've got to copy this. And then I'm going to paste it right on top. And then to its own new layer. So then you're going to get this, and you want to make it however you like. So I'm going to do light and only. And then you can move this around, rotate it, have fun with it. You can also add particles, whatever you'd like. I personally like this, and I'm going to put this and this on top. This changes the orders of the layers. So now it just looks cleaner overall. So that's how you make your own really good quality render with good effects and everything on Blender and GIMP. I hope this video really helped you and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, please comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see, um, animations or anything. So thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye! Hello, this is Papa John's. Would you like takeout or delivery?